this is a short weekend trip that I took with a friend Tony to a Swedish island called Öland over just a few days from Malmö to Lund, uh, moving on to Hofdala Castle and Osby where the Brio toys are made, uh, to the Mobar Stone, all the way to Kalmar to see the castle, next day to Bohol riding the stone coast to Lange Erik which is a light tower northern tip to Lange Yen at the uh, southern tip also seeing uh, Egetor Ring Fort and on the way back uh, seeing the Salmon House which is the place you want to go if you're into salmon fishing and this is the trip <laughs> So we're in the city of uh, Lund. Lund is a um, university city in uh, Sweden. It has a cathedral that I just want to pop by. I'm not going into it. I don't think it has opened right now, but it's, uh, it's a very old cathedral built in the uh, 11th century, I think. It's supposed to be very, very nice. I'm going to take a pic couple of pictures from the outside and um, yeah, just walk around it for a bit. I think. Actually, a fun fact about Lund in Hindi. Lund is a, a slang word for uh, uh, male genitalia. If your last name is Lund, an Indian giggle when you present yourself, you probably know why. I know why this town is named after a dick because those they blocked the road and they made a detour route, but that detour route is at dead end. Well, I guess we get to see a little bit more of of Lund. What the f? So I did not get to go to Lund. Um, well, I am in Lund. I didn't get to go to the cathedral, and I'm also running a bit out of time, so I don't have too much time to ask a lot of a lot of people. Because I'm sure you could get here if you really wanted, but. I need to meet uh, Tony, my good friend. So, next uh, head, uh, waypoint is uh, the meeting place with Tony. Look at that, seriously? All the roads are bleeping blocked. On the way to meet uh, Tony, outside a um, town called Hör. Uh, from there we're going um, towards Earl and obviously but um, taking some gravel roads it, uh, it's not the fastest road nor the uh, shortest but it's, uh, it's a nice route so this is a uh, Skarholt castle this looks pretty nice it has a cafe and uh, whatnot I need to go there someday that looks pretty cool. Wow. Look at that. Wow. This is a super cool road. Back then it was uh, very narrow. A super cool road. I really, really love this. This is great. That's a nice car. Hello, sir. So we hooked up with uh, Tony. He's uh, riding behind us. Maybe you can see him in the mirror. On the trip uh, into Romania uh, earlier this year, 
he broke his leg he hasn't fully recovered yet he's out of the cast and, and all, all these kind of things but he needs to uh, take it easy and he can't stand on it for too long so we're just doing some easy gravel that doesn't take a lot of you know, standing up so we're on our way the two of us to the island of Öland yay so this is one of the uh, a type of Swedish gravel road and, and as you can see it's very very nice smooth um, yeah it has a little loose surface but really it is something that you, you can ride on any bike on this this is a very nice oh a lot of kayaking and a lot of activity so we better take it slow here wow that's awesome all the kids you know boy scouts cool it could be cool to go kayaking today or canoeing i think it's canoes isn't it to be technically specific a gate it means that you're not supposed to go there but this gate was at the exit so it didn't make sense to turn around and, and go back where we came from This is Hofdala Castle. We're just uh, having a break, having a Swedish fika, which means uh, a cinnamon bun and a cup of coffee. So after having the coffee break, we uh, headed towards a town called Osby, which is the uh, origin of uh, the wooden toys called uh, Brio. Um, it was a bit of a disappointment because there was not, nothing to see actually the, the, the museum was more like a, a, from the outside like a, a, a small shop so we quickly headed on moving on to our next destination which was the Wilhelm Moberg Memorial It's been raining quite a lot so I had to take the, uh, the microphone adapter out of the GoPro to seal the GoPro so here we are on the Swedish countryside. We're getting we're getting hungry. It's getting a little late for uh, for lunch. That's a nice that's a nice area. So a little gravel bit by the looks of it. Oops, this one? Oh, okay. Let's see where that takes us. I think this is the way. I'm still on the route according to the GPS. What I'm mostly worried about is that if it gets too slippery because we are on street tires. No, oh, that's good. Very good. Gotta watch out for my body. Oh, there he is. The Swedish countryside. Nice. 
so there's this you know the stones the stone wall that you see there I think there's something to the story that soldiers went to war and in return in payment they got um, land from the king so what they did is that they took all those rocks and whatnot because they wanted to use the land for farmland I think and used them for building defenses so we are uh, approaching uh, Wilhelm Muber's birthplace and Wil Wilhelm Muber is a famous well at least a, as, as famous in Scandinavia writer and he wrote a couple of uh, novels one of the most famous one is the um, the immigrants and it's about uh, the Swedish immigration back in the 18 the middle of the 1800 the 17th oh it's got to be the 19th century doesn't it? Oh, anyway it's been a very very popular book oh, serious there's, there's a couple of books one of them is, is uh, the immigrants um, yeah he was it was pretty interesting he started out he was actually uh, he only attended school as far as I know a couple of years but those uh, during those years he had a teacher that exposed him to uh, the written language and he got so um, committed and so interested and passionate about the written, written language that he uh, started a career um, actually as a journalist he didn't have any particular education per se but he was uh, working as a journalist at the local uh, newspaper but he got fired actually because he was he was actually a pretty critical journalist uh, investigating stuff and um, he ended up investigating friends of the the editor of the newspaper uh, at which he was uh, employed so the editor fired him because of that and he turned a little bit against the establishment yeah interesting story actually and also interesting story about the uh, those immigrants that uh, back in the uh, the mid 1800s as i mentioned earlier they, they uh, there was 1.2 million swedish people about 1.2 million swedish people who migrated to america and he wrote this novel about a family who uh, immigrated to america to wisconsin as far as i remember also we are going to um, town called Kalmar and there is actually a town in uh, Alberta Canada that is called Kalmar and it's actually named after the first mailman or something like that running the post office um, he uh, had immigrated from uh, Sweden from the uh, from Kalmar so that is why that little, it's just a little small village um, in the Alberta, in the state of Alberta in Canada. Well, that's another fun fact. The Kalmar Castle uh, was the venue for one of the most important political events in Scandinavian history, the uh, Kalmar Union that was uh, led by Queen Margaret I of Denmark. It's one of the best preserved Renaissance castles of Sweden and is open to the public. All right, so we saw the castle. And I took a f picture of a bride who did not want to have her picture taken. I think that's probably the first time I've ever come across a bride who did not want to have a picture taken on this very very special day. It was a very very nice castle. Very very easy parking and very easy to get to. Where we went there was no fee. Parking was free as well, at least for us, but I don't know if we parked legally, we parked on the uh, sidewalk. Absolutely recommend it. This is the bridge to Öland. And apparently, uh, I was told, but it makes pretty good sense that it is only for cars. No bicyclists, no pedestrians. I guess there's no room for them. And what they do is that they, if you are with a bicycle and, or you, you just, you know, hiking, 
there's a ferry or you can probably uh, I'm sure there's shuttle buses as well well this is a very nice view you can see the rain clouds in the distance so the landscape is um, on Ullen is very flat there's this place called um, Stora Alvard the big Alvar I I'm not sure what Alvar means it has a very 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 thin layer of soil preventing trees to grow and the reason why this layer is so thin as far as I understand it it has a, a, a very high pH value so nothing can grow and apparently some places I don't know if, if we can get to those places with the bike but some places it is uh, you, 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 there is no soil whatsoever you, you it's uh, the, the bed truck is directly right there in front of you the Bohem castle was probably built by King Canute the first in the 12th century there was a lot of struggles between Denmark and Sweden and the castle was severely damaged through one of those wars in the 17th century a restoration would begin ordered by Charles X but when he died the restoration and construction was stopped it was completed in 1709 for a hundred years it was falling into decay and in 1806 it turned into a ruin by a fire that had started in the roof <coughs> That's awesome. What are you doing? <laughs>